All right, so streams live. Uh, make sure it's coming in okay and audio is coming in okay. Let me know if there are any problems, and then we'll kind of get to it. So. Does it look okay, guys? And sound okay? Oh, I'm getting uh, hearts from Lucky Gamer 13. Shout out to all my subscribers. Shout out to my sister. Yeah, I know, right? Like, we should. Uh, you should all um, all subscribe. Give my channel bits. I'm going to become an affiliate. It's going to be awesome. Oh, thank you. All right. Um, well, we'll wait just a minute here. Get uh, get everybody connected, and uh, looks like we got six chatters on uh, on um, on stream chat, and then looks like ten or so of you guys in the Discord. Let's get these viewer numbers up. Got to make affiliate. Get all the ad money. Cha ching, cha ching. Not really, but yeah, it would be kind of cool. Um, well, affiliate, yeah, four four fifty or not four fifty. Getting affiliate, I think, is relatively easy. Um, I'm probably pretty close to a bunch of the requirements now, but uh, but you don't get all the ad monies with affiliate and stuff. I think you have to be partner or whatever which is even which is harder to get um so yeah um only 13 people viewing that makes me a sad panda so yeah makes me even need sadder panda because that means a bunch of you blowhards are skipping class I mean, obviously not the ones that can hear me now because you're here, but whatever. Um, all right, well, let's get to it. It's 1510, so uh, let's go back to uh, Chrome. And uh, in particular, uh, I wanted to talk a couple of things. So uh, the first is a piece of good news. Um, and the good news is... Uh, what do you not see over here on the right in the assignment uh, waiting? What's missing now? It's over here. Yeah, but what's what's missing in that list? Yeah, the basic skills exam. So what's happening to the basic skills exam? Any brilliant ideas? You can talk in Discord and I'll hear you. Or, Well, that's one way to put it, Arlen. So, yes, yeah, so the basic skills exam is canceled. We're just not going to do it. Um, so, um, right. Uh, it's gone. Um, so, uh, there's some, some good news um, for everybody. Uh, the other good news, uh, or possibly good news, I wanted to... Uh, kind of tell everybody about this before you hear it from the rumor mill and start getting a bunch of wrong ideas in your head. So uh, the faculty met yesterday. Um, oh, yeah, Jimmy. No, there is no bad news. Um, not really. Um, 
because I'm not adding anything in its place, so you guys just get lucky. Um, the other good news is um, I know a lot of you had uh, expressed in my little informal survey some discomfort and whatnot about uh, grades and stuff like that. Um, given that this whole new world of online stuff, and I'll refrain from singing the Disney, uh, you know, doing the, the whole new world from Aladdin uh, on the stream for everybody's ears and the class in your house. A world. Um, yeah, that. So we got some glee clubbers. We'll let them sing it. Um, anyway, so uh, the faculty had a meeting yesterday to decide what to do about grading policies for the semester, given the craziness of this whole new world of, uh, surprise, you're actually at an online university. Um, you didn't think you were, but you were. So I'll give you the TLDR version. Essentially, uh, everybody, seniors included, can CC any course that they want for any reason, and it doesn't have to be, uh, it, it can be all of your courses, it can be none of your courses, it can be some of your courses, uh, and all the usual rules around using a CC are basically off the table for the semester, so there's no, huh, yeah, it's up, it's totally been up, man, for like five minutes, where you been? Um, anyway, so, um, um, sorry, um, the, uh, so what that means is you guys are, um, you guys are able to CC, uh, any course that you want. It can be in your major, it can be in your minor, it can be just for whatever, um, and it doesn't count against the normal uh, thing. Okay, so Reese, yes, yeah, so a CC course uh, doesn't count in any way on your GPA. So if you CC'd all of your courses in a given semester, you would not have a GPA for that for the semester. Like, it just doesn't exist. Um so, uh, right. Uh, so, are there any questions about, and I'll kind of uh, answer any questions about the policy, um, and uh, I, I would suspect in the next day or two that you guys will get an email from probably the registrar um, with... Um, uh, with all the details of it, but yes, the you can CC as many courses as you want this semester, and this semester only, basically, all of the rules for CCing, like uh, you're allowed to CC an EQ, normally you're not allowed to do that, but for this semester, you can, basically, all the rules go out the window. Um, however, uh, to do it, you have to do the CCing uh exceptions what do you mean Arlen no um i think the only the only situation that you wouldn't be able to i believe would be a first half credit course because those were finished before the coronavirus thing happened. Um, but that's a very, very small number of courses, so um, that doesn't really make a difference. Now, so what I meant by the details, Arlen and everybody else, was more like what the dates are and uh, sort of policy, pr like procedural kind of things. Um, and then... Um, uh, you know, the full text of the language just so you guys can read. Uh, there's also going to be, I think, some recommendations or notes uh, about, there are some situations where it would not necessarily be in your best interest 
to use the CC option, uh, particularly those of you who are thinking about graduate school, medical school, things like that, where it's not a it's not as simple of a decision as you might think it is. Um, so uh, just be on the lookout for the email whenever it comes out uh, about some of those details um, and be in contact with your advisor. Um, I would say maybe starting next week if this is something you'd like to exercise. Um, of course, next week will be uh, when most of you will be having conversations with your advisors about uh, fall registration anyway. So um, that would be a good time to, to kind of talk, talk with them about it if this is something that you would want to do. Okay, now, I do want to be very clear here that doing a CC option does not, like, unless you say something to me, I would not know who is exercise the CC option and who hasn't, um, unless I happen to be your advisor. Um, but in any other situation, the, the instructor is not notified of it. Um, so it's, you know, your choice whether or not to say anything. However, um, CCing doesn't mean slacking off, guys. So, um, you know, one of the things that I'm going to do um, is... I need to basically make some edits to the syllabus in light of some of the changes we've had to make. Um, and one of the things I'm going to add to that is basically uh, my expectations of you, even if you choose the CC option. Because it doesn't just mean blow off class, and because uh, that would make me a sad panda. All right, so anyway, uh, any questions on the business end of things before we get back to... Uh, why we're all here, which is programming and stuff. Uh, yes, Big Flip and Rich, a freshman can CC enduring questions. Uh, normally you cannot, but this semester will let you. Uh, which is, I know there's probably going to be some seniors like Arlen who are salty about that. Um, who'd like to go back and retroactively CC their EQ class, but... Uh, um, <laughs> Arlen, nope. <laughs> um, uh, so, will my grading change now that you can CC? No. Um, I do not. So, my, and the reason for that is, of course, I don't know who's going to CC or not. Um, and, uh, but the other thing would be, basically, my expectations of... Uh, so let me put it this way, uh, if you do or don't do certain things, that will get you an NC, um, and uh, I, I just want to make sure everybody's clear that I still expect you guys to do things, um, and Jimmy asks, are you able to CC right away or the end of the semester. Um, that's one of the details that's in the policy that will come out to you guys. Um, normally there's like a two-week window when you can CC. That window is much more broad, uh, will be much more broad this semester. You don't have to worry about it today. It's not like the deadline is Friday or it's not, okay. Um, my re uh, memory of our discussion yesterday is that you could do this up until the last day of the semester, uh, the, before finals week. Um, so the window is a little bit more open, uh, and so you don't have to rush into the decision, nor should you, because once you do CC something, it, that's it. It's done, right? There's no takesy backsies. Um, so anyway. Um, okay, any other questions on that? Uh, I'll try and answer as much as I can. Uh, Chongo's typing. Let's see what Dot Chongo has to say. Is the XOR project in? No, it is not. Um, I need to put that in. I deliberately left it out when I did midterm grades because... Um, Oh, Simon, yeah. I deliberately left it out when I did midterm grades because 
it would have really screwed well it would have made all your grades look way too high and um because it would have been averaging uh you know basically two-thirds project one-third assignments uh so i left it out when i did midterm grades uh just to um uh, to not have the grades look too skewed in on the high side um, but I will put that in so you don't have to worry uh, about that um, because what you guys are doing now and basically a lot of the stuff we'll do for the rest of the semester are additional projects and uh, so that will be a bit more um, uh, the numbers will be more realistic um, yeah okay um, Okay, and sorry for the dog going crazy out in the living room. Um, not much I can do about that. So let's uh, let's get back to scratch and let's start uh, doing something. So I wanted to show you guys uh, a clever trick for doing fading. Um, let me get rid of the cat and uh, let me throw in a couple of random sprites, and I'm just going to pick. Um, you know a couple of things here it doesn't really matter okay um, so if I want these sprites to fade out or in individually then what I can do is just make them fade out or in individually sorry and the dog is wants attention so the puppy gate or the baby gate excuse me goes up at the office door so she cannot get in and annoy me while I'm trying to teach. Sorry about this, guys. Um, okay, so uh, if I wanted to make an individual sprite fade in or fade out, we kind of talked about how to do that, but basically what we want to use for fading are uh, the um, the ghost effect okay so I'm gonna set uh, I'm gonna have under events I'm gonna have green flag clicked and I'm gonna set the ghost effect to zero initially and right now I'm just doing this for the Apple well we can do things for the other sprites uh, later okay so if I run that it doesn't look like anything has happened and uh, the reason is that a ghost effect of um, the um, all right, DJ, uh, I'll answer your question in a second. Um, how to have the text come up at the same time with the sprite talks? I'm not quite sure what you mean there. Um, type in the chat a little bit more detail what you mean. Uh, while I keep going. So uh, ghost effect of zero basically means that the object is 100% visible, 0% transparent. And if I change that number to say 50, it's 50% 50 transparent and 50% visible. 25 would be 25% transparent, 75% visible. And then if I make it 100, it's 100% uh, transparent, 0% visible. Okay, so I can make something fade by, for example, making a loop like this. Okay, and if I run that, every time the loop runs, the fade effect uh, increases by 1% and the object fades out. And I could speed that up by, for example, um, doing it twice as fast, or, you know, I can make it super fast. Oops. Want that to be 20. Okay, so you can tweak the numbers here uh, in order to make the effect faster or slower. Um, and that, you know, how fast or slow the fading occurs. That's really up to your artistic discretion, um, kind of just how you want it to look. Um, so let me copy, copy this code, and I'm going to send it to the ball. Well, if that would work. Um, 
me zoom out here and try that again. Okay, so there we go. I've got that code sent to the ball. I'm also going to make a copy of it and send it to the bow tie. And that didn't work. Okay, there it worked. And let's make sure I don't have a duplicate on the apple. Okay, and then I'll blow this back up so it's a little bit more readable. Okay, good. So, uh, now I've got the same code for all three sprites, and you see they all fade out exactly at the same rate. So what I'm going to do is I'll make the apple fade out the slowest, just for sake of demonstration. Uh, I'll make the ball fade out... Um, next and then the bow tie I'll have fade out the fastest right so I can make each one kind of fade out um, uh, you know how whatever rate I want and I can also do this to make them fade in instead of fade out so I'll start them at a hundred and then decrease uh, the effect and this way they will all fade in but they're going to fade in at different rates so if I run that right the apple is the slowest the bow tie was the fastest and the ball was the uh, in the middle okay and so if I want them to each fade at an individual rate or maybe they start fading at a different time then I'd want to have that code basically on a per sprite basis. Okay. Um, all right. Any questions on the fading uh, trick here before I move on to uh, another trick that you guys will hopefully find useful? Uh, should we do a wait one second block for the timing? Uh, yeah, Devin, you totally could. So uh, in this case, they all start at the same time. Uh, the fading effect, but I could, for example, make the bow tie wait a second, and I could make the um, the ball wait five seconds, and then I can control not just how fast they fade in, but when they start fading in. Um, now, notice, by the way, that I put that after the set ghost effect, uh, so that they were fully transparent and they faded in. If I had switched the order here, then it would have worked different. So watch what happens if I switch the order. Okay, so I'll run that one more time. So what happened here was the ball was visible at the end of the last time I ran the code. It waited five seconds, made it transparent, and then faded back in. Okay, so uh, that may be the effect that you want, or maybe you want to have something fade out and back in or something cool like that. But in this example, uh, I would actually rather have it in this order where they start fading in at different times and possibly go different speeds while they're fading. And all these numbers here are basically just made up um, for the speeds and the times, right, just for sake of example. Okay, so good question there. Um, do we have, uh, so Nick, it looks like you're typing something. Let's see what's up there. And you guys can feel free to speak in the Discord uh, thing. I can hear that. The recording, that audio won't go into the stream, but I'll be able to hear it. Uh, or you can type, that's fine too. So let's see what totally not an inappropriate name has for us. Uh, my question earlier was, how do you have uh, do the text to speech and have the word bubble come up at the same time so that it appears as a subtitle for what's already being said? Okay. Uh, let me add another sprite to demonstrate that. Um, so let's take uh, Abby here and 
Abby. Uh, so what he's talking about, the text-to-speech, there's a couple of uh, options you've got. Uh, you can have, under looks, you can have a character say something. All right, so let me get an event there. And, uh, sorry, looks. Um, so let me say this. If you run that, she will say hello, which basically just puts a text box uh, up above. And think, by the way, um, just makes it a, like, uh, it's got the dot, 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 so it's not like she's actually speaking it. Um, so um, the difference between these is the one that has a timer on it, the two seconds here is how long it will stay visible. Um, and uh, so, for example, if I did this, she'll say hello for two seconds and then switch over to the next thing. Um, so the question was um, the text-to-speech uh, feature. Okay, so if you go to sound, um, you don't see any text-to-speech stuff there. So where the text-to-speech comes from is if down here you see this blue button where it says extension, uh, there are various extensions that you can add into um, your um, into your project. Uh, and if we were on campus, we would have talked a little bit more about some of these. So for example, um, Makey Makeys and Micro Bits are, uh, I have a couple of both of them. And so what you can do is you can build simple controllers or games that have a physical component to them and you wire stuff up to it. Um, this one here, the sensing motion with the camera, you guys could actually use that if you have a webcam. Um, what was with that beeping? Hold on. Did anybody hear that beeping? Not sure where that came from. Um, so um, the, uh, the text-to-speech uh, is one of the plugins that you can use. You can do something in Google Translate or text-to-speech. So let me add the text-to-speech here. And um, what I could do would be, for example, to say um, here. Hello. Okay, so did you guys hear it saying hello? Um, that the reason I ask is I need to make sure that I've got the, uh, yeah, you heard it. Okay, good. The uh, audio uh, was being picked up for the stream. Okay, excellent. Just checking. Hello. Okay, so um, so let's, for example, put these things together. Hello. Okay. Um, so the question was, how do you make these sort of things happen simultaneously? Um, so, for example, let me do, let me make the message a little longer. Um, for sake of demonstration. Hello, my name is Abby. So you see that the purple block that where it put the text, um, that appeared after the sound had been uh, fully, uh, fully made, the text-to-speech part. To make these simultaneously, I could do something like this. Hello, my name is Abby. Um, and then we could do, say, for example, let me say, let me just duplicate this. Um, okay. Hello, my name is Abby. I really love computer science. Okay, so how's that look? Does that uh, kind of make sense? Pretty cool. Um, creepily, you stop. Well, okay, so here's the other thing you can do. You can set the language to different things. 
Uh, so and you can change the voice. So let's make the. Uh... Hello, my name is Abby. I really love computer science. Okay, so that looks like uh, she's, um, you know, part of the East German swim team from 1980, uh, women's swim team. Or you can have. Meow 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 meow. Okay, if any of you use that in your project, you automatically fail. Um, Hello, my name is Abby. I really love computer science. Okay. Hello, my name is Abby. I really love computer science. Okay, so you've got uh, a couple options for the voice, and this I'm frightening. I, I'm... Hello, my name is Abby. I really love computer science. Okay, so that sounds like she just took a big hit of helium. Uh, all right, so we'll go with that one. But you can also set the language to English, and let's see what other options it's got. Um, so um, let's see. I'm going to duplicate this um, uh, because I'm really curious to see how this would work. So let's um, let's make this um, uh, in French instead of in English. Um, and uh, see what happens if we switch this from English to French. I'm really just curious if this will work. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Abby. J'adore informatique. Yeah. So, there we go. Uh, that was pretty cool, right? So you can uh, uh, you could even have uh, different translations for your game. So, for example, the user could uh, choose to pick things in Spanish or in English or French, uh, as it is here. Um, let's see what other languages we got to work with. Uh, Arabic, Chinese. Ah, oh, there's no Klingon in here. Oh, that's lame. Oh, well. I suppose I should have expected that. Um, so, but that actually sounded pretty good. Bonjour. Je m'appelle Abby. J'adore informatique. Okay. And informatique is um, the French uh, way of saying computer science, just FYI. Uh, but then we can go back to, um, let's disconnect that and go here. Um, Hello. My name is Abby. I really love computer science. Oh, so you can even do it and have sort of a fake accent if you wanted to. That's kind of funny. Um, so. Hello, my name is Abby. I really love computer science. Okay, so uh, so actually that was a good question um, about uh, because that meant that we get to talk about plugins. Um, but we could also let's actually throw in here the Google Translate part. Um, and, uh, oh, this is going to be really cool. Okay, so let's, um, let me duplicate this and put that over here. And then I'm going to disconnect that, plop this over here. And let's say you guys don't know French, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, um, hello, my name is Abby and translate that into French, and then put that, um, I'll duplicate it, put that Hello. here. Hello, my name is Abby. I really love computer science. Okay, and then let's switch this to French, and let's see if it... Salut, je m'appelle Abby. I really love computer science. Okay, so, um, so let's, uh, let's duplicate this. And let's cop copy that and put it there and duplicate it. And then we Salut. can... Salut. Je m'appelle Abby. J'adore vraiment l'informatique. Yeah. J'adore vraiment uh, informatique. Okay. Um, which, you know, there's more than one way to translate things, obviously. I mean, vraiment actually would have been probably better. Um, Uh, here because uh, that gets the adverb into our sentence. Um, so vraiment just means uh, truly or very. 
um, uh, or I very, very much like something. And so, yeah, you don't even have to know what the French is. Uh, we could we could do, for example, oh, I don't know. Um, Mike, are you with us? Um, let's uh, let's put it into Chinese, and uh, you can tell us how realistic this is. 你好,我叫艾比,我真的很喜欢计算机科学. Okay, so how was that, Mike? Um, let's see, see you in the chat. Was that pretty good, uh, or was that terrible? Um... But you know that's pretty cool. Um, oh, and notice that it got the uh, the characters here. I picked simplified Chinese. Uh, I could have picked traditional Chinese. Um, I'll put it in the other one, and then Mike can comment as to the quality of both of those. Um, so yeah, let's see what we got. 你好，我叫艾比，我真的很喜欢计算机科学。um, okay, uh, now a bunch of you, I'm sure, speak Spanish, so let's try this in Spanish and see. Uh, oh, and we have an option. Uh, should we do Spain Spanish or Latin American Spanish? Well, let's do both and actually see what, how the, what the differences are. Um, well, okay. Um, Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. Yeah. Okay, so pretty cool, huh? So you don't even have to be able to speak the language to uh, um, uh, to be able to do some translation. So, let's see. It works in Spanish. Uh, it's funny writing the text in Spanish, but changing language to English. Um <laughs> Jimmy, who here speaks of oh, Spanish? Sorry, I thought I, I thought you said English. I'm like, uh, hopefully we all speak English, bro. Um, yeah, does anybody uh, native Spanish speaker? Um, maybe you can answer Jimmy's questions. All right, Elijah. Um, yeah. Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. All right, so I'm going to change this to Latin American Spanish, so let's see what that's all about. Hola, mi nombre es Avi. Realmente amo la informática. Okay, so I think that was the same thing. Hola, mi nombre es Avi. Realmente amo la informática. Just a uh, slightly different kind of uh, accenting and um, um, obviously the, the, the voice was slightly deeper uh, in that case, but... Um, yeah, okay, so that's pretty cool. Um, oh, and it is worth mentioning, by the way, that uh, this thing here, this round bubble where there's the selection, uh, if you go to variables, um, well, there's two things here. Uh, the language is a variable, okay? And uh, I, for example, could, under variables... I could set uh, the language to. Um, Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. Um, okay, so this defaults to English. Um, I think what we could do is. Let me try this. Uh, nope, that doesn't work. Um, uh, let's see, text to speech. Um, basically, what I was trying to do was to make it a variable so that you could have it programmed. Um, but uh, anyway, okay. Uh, so let's uh, let's get rid of this. I think we get the idea. Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. Uh, yeah, Devin, I can um, um, I can see the uh. The stuff in Discord. Okay, so Devin says accent. You'll notice it with the double L's and the V's. Okay, so let's uh, let's listen to that closely. Um, Hola, mi nombre es Abby. 
Realmente amo la informática. Okay, so we don't have any double L's in this. Um... Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. All right, whereas in Latin American Spanish. Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. Okay. Um, well, anyway. Um, okay, so that's our hashtag liberal arts college uh, thing for the moment. Uh, okay, so let me um, let me just. I'm not going to delete this. I'll just disconnect it so we don't have to hear uh, the Spanish every single time here. And um, yeah, Devin. I mean, I guess you guys can tell me something that has double L's and V's in it that makes sense in Spanish, and we could type that in here. Um, and then I'm sure you'd be able to hear the difference in the sounds. Um, I don't, you know, me español es muy malo, so um, I'll let you guys do that, and I'll just stick uh, avec le français. Uh, okay, so um, while we're on the subject of the plugins, uh, there's some other ones that you guys might want to play with. Uh, music, pen, and the video sensing uh, would be kind of interesting uh, things to use there. Um, the makey makey micro bits all of the rest of these require hardware that would interface with your computer um and so those are unfortunately off the table um unless somebody really wants me to mail them something um but uh but you do have some pretty cool things to do with the extensions there uh to spice your your game up or your your studio animation okay um so let me uh let me just replay what we had we have the three tech or the three objects: the ball, the apple, and the um, um, bow tie that are all fading in from our white background. Uh, and they all faded in, and I sort of deliberately set it up this way that they would fade in at different speeds and at different times. What I wanted to show you was kind of a cool trick that you could use to make things fade out instead of fade in. So when you're making your animation it's quite likely that you would want to have different parts of it fade in or appear at different times. But at the end of your animation, you want it to fade the entire screen to fade to a whatever color you want. Okay, I'll do black here in my demonstration. Um, it doesn't have to be black. It could be really any color you wanted. Um, but uh, the trick I'm going to use in order to make it look like everything is fading to black, I'm going to make another sprite, okay, and, oops, that's not what I wanted. I want to create a new sprite by painting it, and when you do that, you'll get a blank window here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to choose my fill color. I'm going to choose it to be black, and then I'm going to basically, um, oh, okay, I need to uh, crank this up quite a bit. I'm basically going to paint a giant sprite that is the entire size of the screen, uh, and it looks like I've missed some. Um, okay, let's let me undo this because uh, there's probably a better way to do it. All right, so let me actually use the uh, the rectangle tool here. There we go. That's a bit more reasonable. Uh, let me try that again. I lost it. Okay, so there we go. So now I have a solid rectangle that is, uh, it should be 480 by 360, which is the size of the screen. Let me convert to a bitmap. There we go. And now it's, um, and I'll convert it back to vector. Um, okay, so 480 by 360, that's the size of the, um, the viewing window here in pixels. Um, and so then what I can do is I can take this solid black sprite and 
the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that it is at the exact center of the screen, which is 0, 0. Okay? And so when I run that, you'll notice it fills the screen all black, and I can't see anything else. Okay, so if I run my program from before, uh, the apple, the ball, and the bow tie are all fading in just like they were before. Um, and um, it's just that this black sprite is in front of them, and so I can't see that. So what I can do is under looks, I'm going to uh, set the ghost effect to 100. And then, under control, let me wait, say, five seconds. And then I'm going to repeat, say, ten times. Um, change the ghost effect by minus ten. Okay, so now watch what happens. Everything happens like before. And then, what I did was I made the all-black sprite uh, that covers the entire screen. Let me slow that down a little bit so it's not quite so um, fast. Instead of making every sprite individually fade out, I made one sprite, the black one, fade in. Okay. Uh, could you make a black background and get the same effect, just move it all the way forward? Uh, you could, Reese, but uh, if you move the sprites in layers, the it would instantly become black rather than fading in sort of uh, gradually like I did here. Um, and so it that, that's an artistic decision. Do you want it to fade or be an instant uh, the screen goes black? Um, I think I'd like you guys to try and use a fade, but if there's a good artistic reason to do something different, then, um, you know, obviously use your, your sense of artistry there. Um, okay, so that was sort of the trick that I did here, was rather than making each individual sprite fade out, I mean, I could have done that, right? And and there might be good reason for you to do that. Um, but another way to, to achieve that effect is to have all the sprites or to make it appear as if the sprites are fading out is by making another sprite that fades in that's in front of all of them and then you get the same effect but uh, by only having to control one sprite. Um, okay, so um, that's just kind of a, a clever trick. Um, now, the reason that I wanted to bring that up is, so let me go back to uh, we've got here the Scratch One project, and let me open that up here, um, because uh, if we look at the specifications for the projects um, under Task Two, there are really five components to uh, what um, what you have for uh, the project is you need to have a logo of some sort that you can make using uh, individual sprites uh, from scratch, or you can uh, kind of draw your own thing. Um, some of you guys are probably pretty artistic and can do something cool in Photoshop uh, or Illustrator or something. Um, you know, make it, make it cool. Uh, something needs to be moving, um, preferably lots of stuff. There needs to be some sort of audio um, to it, and that can either be music, sound effects, both, whatever, you know, seems reasonable. And then at the very end, you want to do this fade to a solid color. Um, and the reason that you're going to have it fade to a solid color is that the video game, when we do that, will happen after your studio animation. So uh, your animation will happen it will fade it to whatever color you want, and then the main menu for your video game would fade in after the, the animation. So um, basically you'll tack on uh, something uh, to this animation later, um, and putting the fade together now will save, save time uh, in the, uh, the future. 
Um, okay, so uh, I think that's probably pretty good for today. We got a couple minutes left, uh, so let me take uh, any questions that you guys might have. Um, excuse me about uh, what we did today and or the uh, the project. Um, um, okay, so Mr. Rector asking about uh, ball having gravity. That's kind of complicated. I can handle that one-on-one -on -one with you uh, for now. Um, we can talk about that some in class on Friday also um, for how to do physics and some other kinds of things. Um, and uh, will I be able via email to answer questions for the project? Uh, yes, along with um, uh, what probably is going to be easier for that is uh, to use Discord. Um, because on Discord you can share your screen with me on an individual basis and then we can talk through things uh, verbally um, and I can actually see your, your project. Um, so that's probably the easiest way um, uh, to do that, Mr. Uh, Miles. Um, okay, and so let's see. So the other question was how I made the plain background again. So let me get out of the assignments and go back to scratch. So what I did there uh, was I, instead of choosing an existing sprite, I hit the paint option, and then that gave me a palette uh, that I could do, and then I used the rectangle tool uh, or the paint tool to just kind of fill in a solid color. Um, I could, for example, like, let me, let me do this. Um, uh, on the fill, you do actually have, um, there are some options for, um, um, forget how I did this, for different like uh, fade effects. So you could do something like, uh, let's just see if this works. I could do that and then maybe uh, color it like that. So it doesn't even have to be a solid color. You can kind of do something two-tone uh, there that looks kind of kind of neat. Uh, but yeah, basically all you're going to do is create uh, under the Create Sprite button, hit Paint, and then you'll get a little palette and you can kind of do whatever you want with it um, under the paint brush. And then there are different fade effects. So you could, for example, well here, let me pick two colors that are a little bit more uh, distinctive. Um, okay, so let's say red and um, this blue color. So then I could get kind of a star sunburst sort of looking effect, kind of Looney Tunes style. Um, all right, sound effects, how do we do that? Okay, so all of the sound stuff is going to be under sound. Uh, there are like uh, sprites. There are a bunch of sounds built in, and if you go to the sounds tab up here at the top and you hit choose a sound, then you can see a whole bunch of different sounds that are built into um, um, built into Scratch. You can also upload or record your own sounds. So a bunch of these are going to be things, for example, um, well, I don't know. Okay, we totally have to add that back in to, uh, let me get rid of this guy, and uh, let's go back to Abby. All right, so we are totally adding the bossa nova. Okay, so under code, um, we're going to start the sound bossa nova, and... Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. Okay, that was maybe a little bit too loud, but what we could do, for example, oh, this would be really cool. Uh, let me duplicate that, and then um, I'm going to make a loop. And this will do it. And then under the sound, I can also change the volume. Um, so that was maybe a little bit loud. So let me change the volume to 50% on that. So it's 
not quite so ridiculous. All right, so now if I click the green flag. Hola, mi nombre es Avi. Realmente amo la informática. Okay, so the other question was, how do I get your translation from the animation to this page? Um, what do you mean by this page? You mean in um, um, on Discord or in the, the chat window? I mean, there you could just select the text and copy uh, the solid back page. Oh, how do I get it off of the solid black page? Well, uh, under, let's see, that was um, the say, so that was under looks. Um, I want to basically hide this, the uh, text backdrop. Um, well, um, maybe I could say nothing. Let's see if that works. Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so if you say a literal blank, then the text bubble won't appear anymore. So you can use that to kind of get rid of things. Um, okay, so let's see if... Uh, I'm just curious if they've got, like, some kind of French business going on here because... Um, Bossa Nova is too. Okay, that's okay. Um, there's probably some, uh, oh, we got some, dumb, yeah, dance stuff going on. Yeah, so you can definitely have a lot of fun with this, probably way too much fun. Um, okay, other questions? Oh, okay. I'm I'm sorry. I, I understand the question now. The transition. I thought you said the translation. Um, so that was this part right here. I made. Hola, mi nombre es Abby. Realmente amo la informática. Okay, let me um turn off all the music, uh, just for the moment. Just so that it's uh not annoying us. So uh to make the transition to the black, it, here's the code. Um, I made everything appear like it was fading out to black by having the black object fade in. So I just kind of thought about it from, uh, from the opposite perspective. Um, okay, uh, other questions? Okay, so if you've got another question, a collective question, uh, throw it in Discord real quick, or um, the Twitch, uh, the Twitch chat, and otherwise, all in the stream, and we can talk kind of one-on-one -on, -one on Twitch or small groups or whatever makes sense. All right. Well, I don't see anything. All right, guys, so I'll go ahead and end the stream here and get this uploaded to YouTube so you can look back at it. And uh, thanks for coming, and I'll see you guys on Discord.